spotlighting the very best at Geneva College Golden Tornado Athletics. This is Tornado Tuesday. And now, here are your hosts, Van Zanek and Andrew Fee. Welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays. I'm Andrew Fee with Van Zanek, and we're excited uh, for this week's episode. We have Lyle Tipton joining us after just a phenomenal week uh, for him and the men's basketball team. Won three uh, straight. They played Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It'll be the last, hopefully the last three-game week of the season, uh, beating Waynesburg, W&J, both on the road and then coming back here uh, and beating Grove City for the first time in 10 straight games. Uh, Van, that was just an exciting night. You would never, the feel of it wasn't that there were only 100 people in the stands. I mean, it was still a great atmosphere. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of that just feeds off of the fact that these two teams met in the conference championship game last year. And we remember what that environment was like with so many Geneva students making the trip up there. Obviously, it didn't end the way we wanted it to. And so, I think they, they had that certainly in the back of their mind. And, you know, Grove City, even though it was just its first game of the year because they've been delayed because of COVID, uh, you know, you knew that you were going to get their best shot. And um, they hadn't played in almost a full calendar year. And our guys are rolling pretty good with wins of Waynes, against Waynesburg and WNJ. And so, uh, you know, we knew it would be a good one all along. We, we, we anticipated that. We previewed it that way. And really it was within four or five points the entire basketball. It's just a great college game. Uh, and it was nice to see the guys come out in the end. And, you know, we had an opportunity to talk to Lyle Tipton here, who um, certainly played a huge role in that. And he had, he had 28 against WNJ, followed that with 26 against Grove City, and just really starting to develop himself into, you know, in our opinion, you know, if not the, the best, one of the top two, three players in the conference. And, uh, you know, he had the ball in his hands at pretty much every critical moment in that game down the stretch. And, and he came through, and he's a sophomore. And so um, that's exciting to see. But what a what an offensive performance by Geneva, just a lot of different contributions from folks. And uh, it was just, it was great to see. And of course, coach Santacero getting his 400th career victory, um, you know, started his career at Nyack as a women's coach and now at Geneva, obviously for all these years, but uh, he, he's done a great job trying to put these pieces together. Uh, and it was, it was just a nice thing. A great, great night, a great way to finish the, uh, finish the week. For the men's basketball on the PAC side, I really think uh, the best you know, top five players in the conference are young. I mean, you're talking about Lyle Tipton, who's a sophomore. Uh, we got to see uh, Grove City has some young stars. Um, so I really think the talent in the conference, it, it very, the, the conference is very similar right now. I, I think anyone could really steal the conference at the end, uh, but the talent is really young and it's going to be really fun to watch the future of PAC basketball. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously a very shortened season, so you're only going to get a snapshot. You get to see each team one time in the regular season, so not a whole lot of time for preparation. So that certainly plays a, a part of it, but what an exciting week it's going to be for the conference tournament. Like you said, Andrew, I mean, I, all 10 teams are going to make the tournament and you know, in my estimation, I would say legitimately maybe five or six schools have, have a legitimate chance to win. I mean, any team can get hot. And, you know, we saw Geneva do that last year with its run late in the tournament. So, like you said, there's a lot of talent, a lot of young talent. Uh, but, I mean, just the, the games that Geneva has played to this point, I mean, pretty much everything has gone down to the wire pretty much. And uh, so everybody's got an opportunity. And uh, so far, so good. Three and one and Geneva uh, tied for first place currently in the conference. And, uh, you know, we've talked about the, the conditions of COVID and all that stuff. I mean, I'll, we're just proud of the fact that we've played four men's basketball games and five women's basketball games. I mean, you combine it and Geneva's played more and more games than anybody else in the conference. And that's a win in itself. So um, having the opportunity to get out there and have these kids play is, is great. And, uh, and we're, we're seeing good success. Yeah. And our women's basketball team, you know, uh, went down to Waynesburg on Monday, uh, beat Waynesburg, lost at home against WNJ and then went on the road and lost to a really good Grove City team. Uh, but, you know, very good progress that we're seeing in Coach Grinder's second year here at Geneva and uh, really starting to see some pieces come together. And, and I'm hopeful, um, you know, I think a short season really actually hurts them a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but really hopeful that the pieces continue to come together late in the season. He's still making changes. I mean, he's shifting lineups around. He's trying to find what works. He's trying to find a formula that's successful. Obviously, he's got a lot of young pieces to the puzzle there to put together. But I think there's a, unlike the men's conference, I think the women's league is clearly cut in terms of top, middle, and bottom. And, 
you know, we've seen the top three schools. I mean, W&J, St. Vincent, and Grove City are clearly the, the cream of the crop in that conference, the top three. We've played them all. We've lost handily to all three of them. And conversely, the team, the other teams we've beaten. And so I think we fall somewhere right in the middle there. And I think we have an opportunity here in the next couple of weeks to put some wins together against some teams if they play well. And you got to kind of step back and look at the big picture when you're viewing this here in terms of where we've been as a program in the last, you know, five, seven years, it's been a struggle. And uh, to see them sitting at two and three, I mean, in most years you might not say, oh, that's a bit, that's not great. That's a, whatever, a big deal. They, they just lost by 30, but yeah, but they're battling. And, and, and you, you take these, take these games in small snipp snippets and see flashes of what these girls can do at times. And if they just make more shots, and I know it's easy said to done, but if you make more shots, um, they're getting opportunities, they're getting looks. And uh, they just have to be a little bit more consistent. And, and I know Coach Griner is, 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 is working hard, uh, but I'm still very encouraged with where that program is going to be. They got some great young players, and uh, it's going to be good to see them as they go continue the next few weeks down the road. No doubt. And, and speaking of another young program, uh, just the men's volleyball team, I, I, they lost to Juniata in three sets on Saturday. That was the only game of the week. But I, I'm able to say Juniata is the best team that Geneva has ever hosted here. Uh, just a really impressive team, ranked 15th overall uh, coming in. It was their first game, um, but really that team has a lot of talent. Uh, and I think, you know, Coach Concer was obviously frustrated, but understands that we're not where we need to be. And that's why we play teams like that early in the season. Yeah, and you give Kurt, Kurt Concer credit for scheduling these teams. I know he worked really hard to put a schedule, a non-conference schedule together in the month of February to get ready for the conference uh, the AMCC that's going to start in March. And so you play the likes of Mount Union and you play the likes of, of Juniata and, the, and those and, and uh, Lancaster Bible that came in last week. I mean, these are good, solid, solid volleyball programs. And, uh, you know, the first two, two losses were probably a little bit more frustrating because I think in his opinion, in our opinion, those were winnable matches. Uh, they didn't, but they were winnable. Saturday, it's been hard pressed, even if playing at our best to, to, to have beaten that Juniata team. Like you said, they were they were pretty solid, pretty solid up and down, balanced group. Uh, we didn't play well, but they, you know, and, and as a result, it was a three set match. But I still think some good things to come for the volleyball team. Again, they're playing a tough schedule early on. Um, hopefully that will trans transcend into uh, being having, having a lot of success in the AMCC, which again, doesn't start until March. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with uh, the maybe PAC player of the week. Uh, we're not sure yet. By the time uh, this willing, airs, you can bank on it. <laughs> we're willing to guess. Uh, Lyle Tipton. Welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays. We're joined with Lyle Tipton, sophomore member of the men's basketball team, uh, coming off a pretty impressive week, uh, we must say. Uh, really great job last week, Lyle. Just, just talk through a three-game week. Um, obviously, had a lot of success personally. Um, but the team did as well. So how did how did last week feel after a bumpy start to the season with COVID and those types of things? Yeah, it was nice. Um, it was nice getting back to uh, a game Monday because we wanted we wanted to kind of wipe out Saturday at St. Vincent out of our minds. So it was nice to get right back into the things on Monday. And then um, it was super busy. Um, I was really tired throughout the week, but um, it was, it was actually pretty fun to play three three games in a week and obviously really nice to get three wins. So, yeah. So talk specifically, Lau, about your, your your conditioning. I mean, obviously, you know, you guys were you guys were down for 14 days in quarantine and you came back and you had some time there to prepare for St. Vincent. But now, I mean, jumping into three games in five days, that's that's got to be rough on the body. Now you got a, you know, a couple of days off before Bethany. But um, talk a little bit about how, you know, you were feeling the second half of Grove City. Maybe, maybe it was just uh, adrenaline at that point was carrying you. Yeah, I think with about five minutes left in the first half, even I was I was winded for sure. And I, of course, I didn't want to get subbed out, but Coach Jeff took me out, and I I think I rested for about three minutes, got back out, and then um, yeah, second half. I think you're right. The adrenaline really carried. I think all of us. Um, and yeah, I was, and I mean, just playing against Grove City, you kind of just need to go get to that next gear and finish the game I guess yeah well we you know you talk about you mentioned being busy uh you're a biology ma major at Geneva which is probably one of the toughest academic majors here um, so talk about balancing academics and athletics 
Yeah, it was hard because, uh, as you mentioned earlier, we were in quarantine for two weeks. So I missed, I think, a total of 16 lab hours that I have to make up. So on top of last week, I think I did three or four of those labs and um, like right after or before practice. And so it was super tiring. Um, but um, yeah, bio, it's a, it's a hard major, but I like it and um, keeps me busy when I'm not on the court. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure, I mean, obviously this is a family thing going on now. I mean, those of listening, I'm sure are aware, well aware that your sister Lauren's a senior on the women's basketball team has had great success there as well. So when you were, when you were deciding between colleges and you were considering Geneva, obviously she had some input in, you know, what it was like and those types of things. Tell us a little bit about what she said to you about, you know, her Geneva experience and maybe, uh, maybe something that swayed you in this direction. Yeah, um, she talked about how the um, uh, there's just a great Christian community and that she really fit in right away. And um, she really wanted me to go um, come to Geneva. And uh, that eventually, I guess, swayed my decision in favor of Geneva. And I can say I made the right choice. I really like it here. And and I mean, the basketball team, the guys are like my best friends and we just really click. So it's, it's good. So I hope I hope Coach Sancera like bought her a meal or got her a gift card or something <laughs> for that for that recruiting help because uh, that's a big uh, that's a big gift. Yeah. yeah, Lyle. So the team atmosphere, the community atmosphere. I mean, you on Saturday specifically, you had a lot of help. Um, you know, obviously at twenty six points, which is really impressive, but I had a lot of help. Like Amos Loftack had nineteen points. Talk about how this team has really come together offensively. I mean, I would say probably one of the best offensive teams in Geneva's recent basketball history. Um, so how's that, how, how's that feel out there? Yeah, no, it's, it's super nice because I mean, if I start to get going and they throw like the double team on me, then Joel or Matt get a wide open three and it's, and then Amos that opens up the lanes for him and Isaac to drive and kick or finish. Um, it's, it's so easy to play with them because it's, it's hard to stop all five of us at once. So um, yeah, it's, it's hard to just kind of pick and choose who the other team wants to beat them and will, yeah, yeah, so. so uh, we, we've, uh, we've obviously gotten a, an opportunity to see you play quite a bit. We obviously enjoy watching you play. I think one of the things that strikes me the most is, is your fearless, uh, your willingness to want the ball in key situations down the stretch. You want the ball in your hands. Is that something that, uh, you know, that comes naturally to you? I mean, I, the first time I remember hearing Lyle Tipton's names was, was at YSU last year um, in the game that you had there. There seemed to be absolutely no fear factor playing against a Division One team. And now that's kind of carried over into key situations where you just put the ball in your hands when Geneva needs a basket, they're looking for 33. I mean, is that something that's kind of just always clicked in your in your game, just always want to be that guy? Uh, yeah, I, I think even like, the furthest I can remember is like six, I think I was six years old playing like soccer. Uh, that was the first sport I played. And even back then, I just like, when when I was tied up and we were down, I just wanted to score the goal. I wanted to um, finish finish the game off. So yeah, I think it kind of comes naturally to me, um, but um, also just the confidence that my teammates and my coaches have in me helps a lot um, in those situations, so yeah. I think, you know, to go along with that, I, I'm like, Dan, you know, RMU last year, we were like, who is this guy? Um, you know, and you kind of have just continued to grow from then. But uh, the fearless piece is your rebounding ability. I mean, you're oftentimes dealing with uh, guys a little taller than you, but you're still in there fighting for the rebounds. Just if I would ask you how you define yourself as a player, what, what kind of, how would you describe yourself? Uh, and I, I know, know that's a hard question for a humble person, but I think it's a, I think it's a good question for you to think about. Yeah, um, I would say I just, yeah, I don't know. Um, I just want it. I if I see the ball go up, I I think that ball that should be mine. I want it. Um, I guess um, if I I think hmm, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard for me to answer. I, mean, that. I can I can answer the question for you, Andrew, if you'd like me to. I mean, just just I mean, get him the ball and like, he's unstoppable in the paint. So I mean, I, I mean, I, I know you can shoot the three. 
I don't think you prefer to shoot the three, but you will if yeah. it's there for you, which is good. I mean, you, I think you, you last year struggled at times, but I think I early on this year, it seems like you have more confidence from there, but I think you'd rather have the ball, maybe either get into the foul line or scoring or the basket. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Sure. So let me, let me piggyback off of my previous question in terms of your sister giving you some advice. So there may or may not be another Tipton that's potentially coming to college soon. So what, what, what if, 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 let's just say you had a little brother that played basketball and wanted to consider Geneva, like what, what would you say to him about, you know, your experience here and, um, and what would, what would your encouragement be to him if, if Geneva were, were uh, to be his choice? Oh, I would just say, um, I would say the, um, the team, the team atmosphere is great here. Um, you fit in right off the bat. Like I remember uh, the senior leadership was really good. Like last year with um, Ethan and Noah, especially um, the first practice I came in, they like acted like they knew me already. And um, it wasn't like, I didn't even have to introduce myself. So I think that was really important. And that's something that um, I hope to do as like an upperclassman next year. So, yeah. Well, Lyle, we appreciate uh, you spending some time with us. I'm going to still work on that uh, question a little more. Eventually, we're going to get to the point where you uh, you aren't as humble, uh, which, you know, obviously being humble is a good thing. But uh, confidence, you know, you, you definitely have earned it in this conference uh, at Geneva. And there are great things ahead for you. So appreciate you spending some time with us. Wish you the best with the rest of the season. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks to Lyle Tipton for spending some time with us. Just a really uh, solid player, has much, a great future in front of him. Uh, and, you know, we, we compare him a lot to Laura and his sister. Uh, and it's just really crazy to have such two talented basketball players uh, in the same family at the same school. It just makes for a lot of good conversations. And we, we enjoy watching them both play. He's just, he's just such a humble kid. I mean, you nailed it. He's a humble kid. He's never going to tell you, you know, how great he is. He's never going to be a trash talker. He just goes and he does it. And he does it in the most critical moments of the game. And, you know, Coach Sanicera, you, you got to love a kid like that. He just works hard. And, uh, you know, like they always say, when your best players are also your hardest workers, you got something really special when um, he's in that category. And it's scary to think what he might be in two years because right now, and, and for my money, he's the, he's the best player in the conference. Yeah, and, and looking ahead this week, uh, both basketball teams on Wednesday uh, competing against Bethany and then Saturday uh, playing Chatham. You know, that that rematch, uh, the men will be down, uh, back down to Chatham. Uh, and, and Geneva put a hurting on Chatham in the playoffs last year. So I'm pretty sure Chatham is going to be out for some revenge. Uh, that was quite the shock. We were down there for that game. Uh, and Geneva that one, could not that miss. one was that one was over before it started. I mean, it was incredible. I, mean, I think it was like twenty-eight to six or something like that. It was ridiculous from the start, and another great turnout from Geneva students and uh, an exciting night. But yeah, they, they, they couldn't miss, could do no wrong, and I'm sure that that uh, the Cougars will will be waiting handsomely for Geneva to show up at their place on Saturday. But you got to get through Bethany first, uh, you know. So uh, you want to play well against Bethany. Um, they've they've had some struggles, uh, but at the same time. You never know. Uh, you know, you have a big win like that against Grove City. You just want to kind of keep that ro momentum rolling. And, you know, Coach Santa Sarah is preaching that to his guys here the first couple of weeks. And, and for the women's team, an opportunity against the Bethany women's team that struggles. And, uh, and Chatham is, is kind of up and down as well. So uh, you hope that they can get some consistency uh, as well and uh, get back into the win column uh, at least, at least one, once this week. Yeah, and men's volleyball will head up to Teal for their only match of the week on Thursday. Uh, at seven o'clock. So be good to see them get back in the win column. Uh, I think, you know, a winnable match, uh, but still have some things to work out here early in the week. Uh, yeah, I practice. think a good barometer. I mean, Teal is in the AMCC, but this will be a non-conference game. This, this conference doesn't start till March, but a conference opponent. So kind of confusing, but, uh, but so, and, and Teal is, is probably one of the, the top two or three schools that Geneva is going to be competing against in the AMCC. So it'll be a good test to see where they're at in the conference uh, when they go up there on Thursday night. Well, thanks for uh, spending some time with us on Tornado Tuesdays. Uh, looking forward to a great week of Geneva athletic action. And we'll be back next week.